Ah, welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings here in Mendham. And uh, somewhat a little bit of happenings in the internet, um, the rest of the YouTubes, some notable things, sort of, kind of. Um, uh, yeah, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't made a video in a long time. So he did uh, make a couple of videos responding to the Benatar antinatalism with Sam Harris thing. And uh, it's quite depressing, actually. And uh, Modern Mystic has also made a couple of videos. Uh, I didn't care too much for them, but <laughs> so I might get around to talking about that. And then Hoffleday, you know, quite irritating person. Um, he has made a video. I haven't played it yet, so I might play some of that and respond to uh, some of the rubbish in there. It's no doubt very rubbishy. Um, and I'll just read a comment here to start um, and kick this thing off, so to speak. Uh, in terms of a, um, yeah, you know, so I'll do some of this asymmetry talk. Um, but it's just, you know, it's all connected to this bigger picture of what we are uh, mechanically, you know, and um, the, the nature of the biases built into us, which, you know, everything, we're addicted to everything. Um, and part of the argument I've been making, or attempting to make, there's lots of examples you can give for any one of these things, and that's sort of the work of um, compiling the examples. And that's kind of the job when making an argument for something is collecting these bits of evidence and piling them all up to demonstrate an argument to mm, idiots. Um, so anyway, uh, so there's two idiots here called Doug, uh, whatever, and some other anonymous, um, due to fascist, whatever that means, yeah, idiots. Anyway, so Harris asked him how he can benefit, how you can benefit non-existence but not deprive it. So if, um, so, so, so the simplest example would be, um, the, the graceful exit thing, the dying gracefully thing. So, you could kill somebody, uh, you know, however you want to look at it. You could know, let's say you had a, the, the crystal ball, you could see the future, and you knew somebody was just going to really suffer for six months. I mean, just horrible. It wasn't going to go well, the therapy, the treatments, everything was going to go horribly. They weren't going to have any quality of life. They were just going to go through six months of, six months of absolute torture. And so... Um, Instead, you intervene and show up and say and explain it to them and blah, 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 and they voluntarily, Kevorkian or whatever, they kill themselves prematurely. Now, they're not going to enjoy the benefit of not being tortured. It's like I could kill somebody on the, the Mangala Gurney who's too far gone. Or you could go with uh, even that movie um, Resurrection or whatever it was called, the Aliens movie, you know, where Ripley is a clone. <laughs> and she kills her other clone. Um, now, the other clone is not going to benefit from not being tortured. There's no one going to be alive to say, gee, I'm so, gee, that feels so much better not being tortured. No, they're just not going to be tortured. And it's clearly, in my opinion, to anybody rational, it's clearly a good. Clearly. Yeah, no doubt about it. And clearly, just as clear, is if <laughs> there's somebody who's perfectly comfortable and um, you do the same thing and they don't get to have brownies, they're not going to miss not having brownies. You know, they're not going to miss having uh, whatever, banana split or some whatever their favorite dessert is, chocolate cream pie. Yeah, they're not here to miss it. They're not here to be denied it. So they clearly can't be harmed by it. And that's the nature of the asymmetry, is that preventing a harm is always good. Preventing a good, quote-unquote, because, you know, goods aren't made of anything but basically getting you out of trouble. Um, in most, all the time. It's always that way. <laughs> you, know, you know, if you really think about it, every good is tied to cleaning up a mess cleaning up something that's broken, something that's not good. You fix something that's not good, and that's a good. But there's no intrinsically good thing. 
where there's intrinsically bad things. That's the asymmetry. The two things aren't equal. Um, one is shallow and superficial. One is substantive and always real um, in terms of if you actually do prevent it. So um, anyway, I'll finish reading here. Um, Harris asked him how you can benefit non-existence but not deprive it, and Bantar refused to give a solid answer. Well, that's just bullshit. He did, but he wouldn't give it in the, the way uh, Harris was harassing him for some personal anecdote or something. He was making it a personal question rather than just a rational question of how you value suffering compared to trivialities, uh, you know, where you're not extracting somebody from quicksand. So find the good where you're not extracting somebody from bad, and then it can be clearly demonstrated that that good, whatever it might be, <laughs> isn't <laughs> necessary or can't possibly be declared um, a bad thing because it's missing. See, missing, fixing somebody, from, preventing bad is always good, but preventing good isn't always bad. It's that simple. That's the asymmetry. All right, so then this anonymous douche says, uh, Benatar's asymmetry argument doesn't hold up. Well, says you. He's not going to make an argument of how it doesn't hold up. He just says it. But everything else he claims is spot on. Well, that's just irrational. Because the whole, f everything else he talks about is essentially woven into the fact of the asymmetry being real. If he actually thought goods were especially solid, as solid as preventing torture, if he thought, you know, your desserts, your happiness eating your dessert was as solid a good, that is, the world was horribly deprived if we don't have people eating dessert, was the same value as a starving child or something, uh, then, then he wouldn't be making the argument he's making. Then he'd be saying, yes, it's worth some torture to have that fantastic good. But no, he's saying, because of the asymmetry, the torture wins. Any torture kills, just wipes out any of those goods, because all those goods are trivial and superficial. They have no real value weight. So you're an idiot. You should be anonymous, because you're an idiot. The podcast was painful. I feel like Sam scored one point early. Bullshit. He didn't score any points ever. <laughs> showing that the asymmetry argument isn't logical. Again, he didn't show it with anything called evidence. But after that, Sam couldn't score another point. Again, and score another point in what way? By making the argument that somehow goods need to happen. Like we need to make people so they can have fun. And that's much more valuable than the idea of not making people who are going to be tortured. And the fact that people can't figure out that, you know, it's a lot more important not to make torture than it is to make silly, trivial assholes going, oh, 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 I have feelings and feel good for a moment, this, this much time. <laughs> yeah, that's silly. So, so anyway, there's probably lots of other ways to describe this, um, you know, in terms of making examples, like if you were going to a store and the store had, you were perfectly comfortable. You no, know, it's like you, you had five sweaters, and you were going to the store and it had sweaters, like you could get a six sweater, or you could uh, feed a child for the day, you know, a hungry child, or some stuff like that. You could cure somebody's headache, a migraine. You could, you know, only an asshole would go for the six sweater. Only an asshole would say, an undeprived person, somebody who's not in pain, they're comfortable, and they just want more dessert. They want another bag of potato chips. Only an asshole would say, no, instead of feeding that kid, give me the potato chips. Only an asshole would go to the store, and if they cost the same thing, only an asshole would buy the potato chips. A preposterous gaping asshole. All right. Uh, yeah, so that's... Uh, so, fuck you, you didn't make an argument. <laughs> and he didn't. It's just not an argument to say that prevention doesn't have value because the prevented harm didn't happen. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the whole point of preventing something is it doesn't happen. But the fact that it doesn't happen and that there isn't somebody saying, oh, I'm so glad that didn't happen to me, doesn't change the value of the experience not taking place. The torture not happening is always good. Ugh, idiots. So anyway, yeah, that's probably enough. There's probably no point in soaking in that crap. So I'll switch a little bit and go to the mystic thing. And um, so much of what he does bothers me because you know, I see the overview in it. And so he's, he's making some weird conversation about how the modern people should go back to religion, you know, because they they need a little structured life because, um, you know, if too much reality seeps in, um, you know, it screws your, your little personal comfort up. <laughs> you know, it, it messes up the, the little mechanism of, of uh, getting by or surviving or something. It's almost he's like talking like a survivalist or something. And it, it's kind of got this notion that, that there's no practical effect we can have anymore. You see, we can't fix the world. We can't politically organize. We can't do anything. Now, the fact that there has been huge failures in our political organization, you know, the two parties are completely insane now. I mean, the, the lefties with their open borders is fuck that shit, and the righties with their give it all to the rich. There's just no fucking rational choices here. But the fact that there's no rational choices right now doesn't mean there'll never be rational choices or that some kind of good organization can't come along. So the fact that we've been through a period of shysterism and, um, you know, where the insincere have won, um, doesn't mean it's always going to be like that or that's some sort of, you know, that's the pinnacle of our achievement, <laughs> you know, is that we've become too stupid to figure out we're getting sold crap. Um, no, it's not, that's not inevitable. It's not futile and especially in the circumstances pointed out so many times there was other comments like there's always a comment from some asshole who says well anti-natalism will never work because no one's going to give up having babies and blah blah and it's already happened most of the world most of the human beings on earth 50% of them don't even get married anymore asshole <laughs> so you know but most people don't have the more than two kids you need to maintain human existence. So the top 80% of people, the ones having the fewest babies, the top, the, the fewest baby 80%, wouldn't sustain, would not sustain by their behavior human existence. They're already behaving like antinatalists. So it's only 20% of the people that you got to shove a cork in. It might only be 15 or 10% realistically, because you could add some more to that 90% to get to two kids. You have to go all the way down to probably 90% of the human population. So it's only 10% of the population that's fucking the game. And, and you're, you're talking like a defeatist. So, so we're right on the brink of victory and these assholes are saying there's no fight to win. No, there's plenty of fight to win here. It's easy. You know, we don't have that hard a task. And all these assholes have to do is say, yes, I'm for it. And they won't do it. They won't raise their hand and say, yes, I'm for it. I mean, they're too pussy to even do that. And it just, you know, it just stuns me how how fucking futile these people's existences are and this fucking nihilism that is represented by the modern mystic um, is the cause. I mean, this, this stupid, idiotic notion that, uh, you know, um, uh, that our intelligence and the weaving of um, thoughts and conversation isn't fundamental to things happening, that you have to actually persuade each other and that we have to actually encourage each other and you have all these damn naysayers who just so because they don't want to do any work they just make an excuse to say work is stupid uh doing anything is stupid you know it's just so fucking irritating because they're not even against it they're just against the idea that well if you're doing it and you see value in it and everybody else sees value in it and you start organizing Oh, fuck, that means I'll have to do something, and I don't want to do anything. I just want to eat cookies. So their own selfishness is just consumed, you know, uh, the fact that they're, they, they're don't, they don't mean to be in opposition. They don't mean to be a fucking 
uh, dead weight we have to drag, you know, to the finish line. Um, but they make themselves into one, you know, just because they're they're just trying to find excuses and rationalizations to be lazy and um, to not have to sacrifice anything at all for the cause. But like I said, they're not really opposed to the cause. They're just behaving as if they were, in the sense that they're, they're just sucking up resources and sucking up the, the, the motivation of the people that would be able to win the victory. They're just so fucking useless. I've said it before, but yeah, the, <clears throat> the first people who should be shot in a war are the fence sitters. They're just in the fucking way. All right, anyway. So I don't know if I need to play any of this. I'll play some of it just because it's domestic and he has a charming voice. And uh, I think in this area or something, he starts talking about how we're, you know, it's all futile and the, our cultures don't provide us any way of investing in our civilization and therefore we should just be thinking about our little world and making our little fences and are taking care of our little gardens and, you know, <clears throat> and not pay attention to what's happening in the world. And try and make a difference to an overall society, even if it came down to something along the lines of joining a march, a big march. You could have a march against Vietnam. You could have a yeah, so you could have used the example of the modern march, which was the march on Wall Street, and how there was nothing wrong with it, except it didn't have any leadership, and it didn't have a clue of what it was marching for. It just knew it was against. I'm against it. But it had no rational strategy of what to replace the thing they were against. So they're against something, but they, don't, they haven't figured out how they're going to fix it before they do their against it. And I guess we do this in wars, right? You go into a war and you're fighting something, and, you know, it's like the Iraq thing. Oh, well, Saddam Hussein's an asshole. We'll make up a whole bunch of crap to get him out of there anyway because we don't like him, so we'll just make up some lies that he did 9-11 and he did this and he did that. And he's a jerk anyway, so who cares? But no thought is given to, well, you have to replace him with something. What are you going to replace him with? And so the march on Wall Street had no clue because they hadn't thought about it and none of the people could agree. Like if you actually came up with a policy and had said, well, let's, let's, let's have a huge tax on you know, any inheritance over $5 million or something. No, no, you can't do that because I expect to be inheriting a whole bunch of money from my you know, trailer park living parents someday because they're going to win the lottery and I'm going to get a whole bunch of money. Or they have some kind of delusion that somehow that tax over $5 million is going to affect them somehow, and that somehow they don't want to be in a game where they can't, you know, and they, they can't pass on to their children insane head starts in life so their little failure spawn can beat the shit out of everybody else in the world with, you know, a club they didn't earn, you know, a club you gave them, and said so it's okay to beat up the rest of the world with the daddy club, you know, go prove how you're better than everybody else with your fake head start, and you're completely fake everything everything completely fake you didn't earn any of it we give you fake medals and say yes go tell everybody else they have to salute you because you have your fake medals well, anyway but yeah when you poke these wall street marchers they, they weren't for anything progressive <laughs> they were just against it i'm against wall street you know the fed but they have no clue about how the economy works or what you need to do to make us have a real economy again. And they certainly didn't understand that it isn't Wall Street, it's the rich people who own Wall Street. And they couldn't figure out that. They couldn't even figure out Wall Street is rich people. They couldn't even figure that out. So yes, it doesn't do you any good to march if your marchers are imbeciles and they don't have like a general patent or somebody who's gonna sit there and you know use them effectively and actually have a plan, you know, uh, once we kill these Nazis, let's go kill some fucking Russians, or, you know, somebody who has a plan. No plan won't work, and that's what most organizations are now. They're just feel good, stroke each other, and say, oh, yeah, yeah, you're, we're, with each, we're with each other, but they don't have a plan. No plan, no purpose, no function, no use. So, yeah, we're stuck with really poor leadership at the moment. 
but it doesn't mean that that's going to be forever. But, um, a march against nuclear, uh, either energy or nuclear um, armaments. You have a march against anti an anti-apartheid march, and these things would. I mean, yeah. So he's going back to marches that actually did work. So that's the joke here, is that the whole thing against anti-apartheid actually did work. I mean, all the heat that was created and all the, we're not going to trade with people who trade with them. It really, you know, the Jews got into some trouble with it because they were in business with the, the, the white supremacists in Africa. And so a lot of people got burned and singed by the fact that everybody kind of understood publicly that, yeah, no, we're done with this slavery shit. We're done with this two classes of citizenship shit. And we're going to judge people as individuals. We're not going to do this lazy thing of saying, well, it's just more convenient just to, you know, arrest everybody wearing sneakers. And those will include all the burglars because all the smart burglars know to wear sneakers. I mean, just because there's a little bit of an increase in, um, you know, just because profiling works, let's do it. Like, fuck no, that's, you're just totally ripping people off. You're totally being unfair. And they could figure that out. 30 years ago, and unfortunately, they can't figure it out today. To a greater extent, work. Since there have been uh, union marches that have been squashed, and many other marches against other various things like wars that have been either squashed and ignored or just plain ignored. <clears throat> There's not much now. Yes, because it's it's just because no one's done the work. They all everybody wants things to happen. You know, they want a scapegoat first for a cause. They want to blame it on Saddam Hussein. They want to blame it on one guy, one thing. You know, uh, Osama bin Laden. They, 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 and that's dumb as fuck. Um, and then they they don't want to do the work of of proper strategy and understanding that yes. You have to do some things incrementally. You can't just change the world in a day. You can't switch to the metric system in one day. And you can't just flip into a whole new policy in one day. You have to have some plan to grandfather out the old farts who aren't going to be able to play along. You know. So, yeah, there's all that part of it is missing because our leaders are chosen based on some plastic facade of, of giving a shit, like an Obama some slick willy bullshit okay of of just being a slick talker not a not a fancy thinker you know just a fancy dresser so they just keep you know choosing their kings in this horrible manner um you know people talking like i said they've to turn bernie sanders into the some sort of new jesus and his ideas is going to have the poor with you always he's not going to fix poverty <laughs> he's going to make it an industry uh, the modern individual can do by grouping into a larger unit. About the only thing I can think of at the moment is um, people have marched and campaigned for what's called gay marriages. Yeah, but there's a whole bunch of stuff. There's all kinds of anti-abortion people and they're really effective because there are a few million people, a minority in the country, but they vote and they vote consistently. And they're, they're, they're focused on the objective. And that's why they're effective. So it, they clearly demonstrate it can be done, but you can't do it with a bunch of lazy-ass liberal douchebags who just want to do a bunch of talking and won't, don't want to do any of the real hard work of actually figuring out how you get to these people. Yeah. What else really has happened in the last 30 years that's been campaigned for? There's not that much. We could say it's because, well, everything's so super duper now, and maybe it is. Yeah, well, that's not the answer. The answer is just as simple. It's just, it's just, it's, it's. The corruption has become systemic. It is a, it's in the system so deep that um, you know it's in, it's very difficult to get it out it's like every single politician is a liar every single judge is a crook every single cop is a wife beating insane kook it's just the truth because it's quite obvious if there was any honest man in the group 
they'd be outing all these dishonest ones that are so obviously dishonest, dis obviously corrupt. I mean, it's like this whole sexual bullshit that's getting all this press now, like they're outing all of these people that have been getting away with um, bullshit for years. Why did they get away with it for years? Is because people didn't have any individual voice. And it's only when they, you know, four, five or six women show up at the same time that they have a real argument. And obviously we have a court system that says, oh yeah, well you can't count all of your previous rapes. We can't hold those against you when we're judging you for this new rape. <laughs> you know, uh, that's kind of a silly notion. It's kind of important. It gives, it gives a woman credibility when there's six others that show up telling the same story of the, you know, little pills in my drink. Maybe the big ones are really knocked out. Or not, I would like to think about that. <clears throat> but there's not much that people seem to do now linking in to groups to get things done. More. And and this is in the argument of the context of his other like he had you know it's called long churches you might see that in the title below there, I, I mean his previous video was some argument like we should go back you know people the poor and the dope dope asses need to go back to religion because somehow they this is going to be a solution <laughs> it's just I don't know where he's going with this nonsense no all people need to do is have more intelligent um, it, it, well look. I mean, part of the problem is is the masses are the ones that are going to be making the judgment. So it's always this lowest common denominator thing. And once idiocracy in, in, in infiltrates, you know, yeah, it's not going to be fixable if the idiots are driving the bus, so to speak, if that's all there are. And I've sort of made this argument so many times, but I mean, it's the intellectuals who are the real disappointment because they're not fighting to save civilization. They're, in a sense, just doing, it seems like, everything possible to destroy it um, with just insanely stupid placatings of, of, of nonsense and rubbish. And they're so interested in their own lives, like the Obamas. They're so interested in just having their portrait in White, Hall, you know, White House Hall or something. And it doesn't seem like they had any ambition to actually do something. They show up to say, I'm going to change everything, and yet they had no clue what they were going to fix or how they were going to fix it or any of it. And they do this slipshod, sloppy ass job because they really weren't motivated to fix problems. They were just motivated to be admired. Yeah, that's all. Love me. Make me a hero. I don't want to do anything heroic though. More and more people are individuals. And I think this is fine as long as their hope is rational and reasonable and... Well, when was hope ever rational and reasonable? When was our, our expectation to even live another day, not to get find out we have cancer tomorrow? We don't have hope about any of this shit. So all that conversation, in my opinion, is quite moot. Yeah, we have, we, we have reason to have some higher expectations now than somebody in the caveman days, so at least we have it better than that. But, it, um, yeah, there's no, you know, even under the best of circumstances, life is still this game you're playing where you're attempting to be something. Um, it's competition. We're, we're driven by it. And that's always toxic because... To have the one winner, you have to have the whole pile of broken losers. And it's an idiotic strategy. Can, yeah, just reasonable. It can be held as a hope for what they can personally achieve in the future. So again, he's, his, he would say, just everybody lower your expectations. You will not change the world. You will not influence people. You will not do this. You will not organize. You will not. And it's just all this bullshit that somehow you can't do it, even though history is full of examples of you can do. And it's only the recent history that, yeah, it's really broken. It's really hard because the mechanisms are broken. You know, I mean, you have to start all over again with a third party, and that's just so hard to do, and blah, 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 blah. So, yes, yes, it's, it's a, <clears throat> it ain't going to be as easy as it was in the 60s to 
fight the man um, but he's there to be fought um, and it just requires uh, the work of, of better conversation more intelligent conversation less scapegoating um, a little deeper analysis of the fundamental problems of life and understanding simple things like every immigrant isn't a charming, wonderful, you know, trying to do the best they can or <laughs> and and that poverty doesn't breed um, brilliance, generally speaking. It breeds crap. And maybe poverty shouldn't be breeding. I mean simple little logical things. Like you don't give subsidies to have kids, <laughs> you know. That's really a dumb way, a dumb thing to do. The people who should be having children are the people that can jump over the hurdles on their own. The competent, not the incompetent. People who need training reels and crutches and a mommy state and, you know, they need subsidies. and you know, They're not the people that should be having fucking children. That's just a little bit of logic. For fuck's sake. All right, well, anyway, enough of this crud. So let's do some half a day and call it a day. Like I said, I'm going to try to do more with these videos. It's um, I'm, I'm using um, Linux Mint this time, so I will make a video comparing Manjaro, Ubuntu, and Mint. And so I think Mint's the winner. Well, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, and Ubuntu is the big loser <laughs> by comparison, in my experience. So it's just my experience. Um, but the idea of this whole Linux thing is it does, you know, it does work. It just has these little glitches that are just so fucking stupid and it's just a little bit irritating. But, you know, yeah, it's free. So what the fuck? Um, no bogus capitalist ass wipe engrandized by using it, which is excellent. Um, and such. Certainly excellent from my point of view. Um, all right, so, yeah, so we'll do some of this fucking douche low day. Uh, yeah, I've been arguing with him on the physics stuff, and it's, he's just such an obnoxious douche. But anyway, so I'm sure he's going to do something stupid here, like, brains don't really get tortured, how could it possibly be, be you know, any symmetry problems at all, because good doesn't matter and bad doesn't matter. I'll say something dumb like that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, watching a bit of uh, Benatar arguing with Sam Harris at the uh, recommendation of him. Mm. Watched, uh, watched the bit I wanted to watch, which is where he tries to uh, justify his argument, roughly speaking. In uh, yeah, so he didn't watch the whole thing. I didn't listen to the whole thing. It's, you have to listen to it, really. It's not much to watch, really. It's just a silly graphic. Uh, yeah, I don't know why Sam can't figure out how to use a webcam and, you know, even for a podcast, you know, you can, you can do the podcast part, but he could at least, you know, you could at least have his image, you know, talking. Wouldn't hurt. In terms of an asymmetry argument. Similarly, watch a bit of him and them. Um, it's been on my mind because, um, to make this video because some some aspects of the argument and its uh, deficiencies have become particular uh, I've gained more clarity in my mind. Firstly, it's with the issue of axiology. Benatar claims that this is an axiological argument. So it assumes value is the way to go. So does he mend them? Uh, yeah, there's no other conversation, so there isn't. Opinion doesn't mean anything. You're really just trying to find, like physics, you're trying to figure, is it a wave or is it a particle? There's no duality here. Um, there's things in the world, in the universe, there's configuration of brain that are bad. It's a bad configuration. I mean, horrible toothache or something. No matter where I put that in the universe, that configuration of conscious brain it's bad. It's intrinsically, fundamentally a bad thing. No rational intelligence who has experienced horrible toothache would ever say, yes, go make that. Go make migraine headache. Put it in the universe. Make a whole pile of migraine headaches 
nothing rational wouldn't be able to, nothing that has experienced it, nothing that has tasted it would say, yes, go make that. Because they know it's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. The word bad means something. It means it's below nothing. Way below. Way, 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 way. And it has to be anything below nothing is, you know, quicksand, is negative, is it's just a fundamental fact. There's a red and a black number. There's gain and there's deficit. There's debt and there's profit. These are different things and this complete asshole still thinks there isn't any such thing, which makes him a complete lunatic. He doesn't understand that value is intrinsic to the state that something is in. And the state of migraine is a value state and it's decidedly negative and any asshole who says it isn't, I hope you get what you fucking deserve. I mean, to insult torture, to minimize it or attempt to diminish it in some way, to not have respect for the high price paid by consciousness in enduring these experiences, to give them no value, is so fucking disgusting. You should just be run over on the fucking street like garbage. You're garbage. You're a styrofoam cup. <laughs> You're disgusting. There's nothing conscious, in my opinion, nothing conscious and rational could ever say it doesn't matter. Too fucking preposterously stupid not to understand, yes, it's a value question and the values are real. We don't make them up. We didn't, we didn't make up the pain of one dinosaur getting eaten up by another dinosaur. You don't need us to show up to say, something bad happened. No, it happens right when the fucking neurons start firing in that horrible way. The bad was there then. The bad has been there through every human experience. You know, people having surgery with no anesthesia. All kinds of shit has gone on. And it was all really, really, really bad. And to have some douche say it doesn't matter is just so fucking puke-worthy. Shoo, I'll use the way to go. But I can't, uh, but I reject axiology. On the face of it, to me, all value estimations by humans are necessarily subjective. Okay, so again, yeah, so you could just make it up. You know, no, you can't make it up. There's a truth, it's there to be described and defined. Again, to just say, it, it, if I don't care, that means it isn't being tortured. It's not a fact that torture, if I'm watching somebody getting tortured, it, if I don't, it doesn't bother me, then somehow the torture itself is now a neutral. It doesn't, it's not a real thing happening. A real consciousness is not in a negative state, all this crap that I just said. I mean, it's an insanely it's a simpleton it's a below simpleton um but this is the problem see when i was talking about like this guy is not reasonably educated and he can talk this this douchery you know this this complete whitewashed nonsense and this is why intellectuals fail because they can't see the obvious they can't even get simple facts right you know and it's like watching these liberal douchebags sitting there applauding open borders when how the fuck, what, what rational, what, 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 what goes through their brain as a thought process? How much thought did they actually give the subject to come up with this idiotic notion that you can just keep funneling wretched refuse into your civilization and it won't crumble like Rome? Because that's exactly what it'll do. You won't have your civilization anymore. I mean, you're, in, you're inviting the very virus that breaks civilizations. Excessive poor. I mean, idiocracy. It has, it, it, the name is appropriate. It is a real thing. And these stupid intellectuals are saying, bring it on. I mean, fuck. You're, you're an insane bigot if you somehow think it's a bad idea to... Uh, you know, after, after we spent all this time arguing religion and finally getting America almost cleansed of it as being something that was controlling, they want to just bring in more religious voters, you know, to, to, to bury on, us under again. 
more lunatics, more fanatic, stupid people to dilute our rational votes. I should feel good because now my rational vote will be diluted out of meaning by these irrational fucking lunatics from a shit culture that they're running scared, you know, they're running here to get away from the country they already soiled with their fucking stupidity. Anyway, I didn't want to get on that subject. I really didn't want to get on that subject, so I could I, spare me your responses, but I just mean, it's, it's not about bigotry. It's about having some kind of rational understanding and, and some perspective on history and understanding that every civilization that fell, fell because it didn't defend the civilization. The people got too lazy to protect their civilization. Fuck. So you're not going to have it. You're just throwing it away. And just the political stupidity of it. I mean, here we have a chance. They, they had the chance, like I said, with the March on Wall Street. There's a real mood to, to start beating the shit out of the rich. And what do the stupid liberals do? They sit there and give people a reason to forget about that subject and just keep thinking about how these dopey liberals are just going to bring a bunch of, you know, <laughs> tr tr tranny poor people into the country. You know, I mean, it just... They're so off the fucking subject. Way off the fucking subject. You know, and then if they do any talk about the rich, they have some stupid plan of just taking the money from the rich and wasting it. You know, just piss it all away. Uh, giving people free shit. You know, not creating incentives, not creating motivations to get people to do um, good work. Not creating good jobs for people to do good work. Instead of having to do jobs where they spam phone call and do all this other shitty crap, shystery crap. Yeah, you know, I'm just so fucking stupid. But anyway, I don't want to get into that whole political thing. I have to do a, another video on economics just because I know the mystic's coming. He's heading there. And this idea of what money is. And it's just so fucking obvious that what money is, is the debt held by the rich. That's what money is. Money's a fucking IOU held by the rich. We don't hold the IOUs. The government doesn't hold the IOUs. The rich hold the IOUs. Yeah. That's such a fucking mistake. And people don't understand that that's what drives, that's what turns your money into shit, is when it's somebody else's money and you're, everybody's bar using borrowed money to outbid each other on everything because the rich have to lend the money. They have to lend the money to somebody because the money can't make money if they don't lend it to somebody. So they're going to keep lending it to people to outbid you on everything you go to buy. On a bunch of debt money. And that, you know, it's just so fucking stupid. Anyway, another subject. Didn't want, it's not this subject of this video. Anyway, we'll just jump ahead here. But we, he's already made his declaration. There's no point in talking for 17 minutes about how you think value doesn't exist as a fact. That it's not a fact that suffering happens on planet Earth on, in sentient brains and that suffering is a bad thing. He doesn't think that's a true statement. He thinks it is possible in this universe that some intelligent thing could actually think it would be a good idea to make a whole bunch of suffering brains. Just an absolute torture. And he wouldn't be able to recognize something's wrong with this picture. No, 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 that can't be right. That's got to be some kind of horrific mistake. He thinks it's actually possible for something rational to see it any other way. To actually see suffering as a good thing. Not possible. So, he's just insane, so there's no point in before I play his video. He's just a fucking insane, stupid douche. So, yeah, let's not even look at that stupid, dumb douche. Uh, yeah, go back to the mystic, or go back to Mike. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, I just don't, there's not much to, you know, I, I, like I said, I have to do some more, I have to do some, there's a lot of stuff I gotta do, I'm very busy, so it's just a, a lot of stuff I'm doing, and it's just a lot, I gotta get flowers, 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 just you know, geese, and ugly fucking foreigners, <laughs> dirty foreigners and damn geese, Ugh, smelly, stinky Canada, but anyway, yeah, they have their moments, I suppose. But anyway, um, so yeah, there's no point in dragging it out. But yeah, I hope to do something more creative with this 
you know, ability to do this whole screen, split screen thingy and all that kind of crap. And, um, I really intended to make like two videos this week and it's just, you know, things, you know, slips through your fingers. You know, you think you got it and it just slips through your fingers. Uh, so I uh, do hope to be more productive and, uh, more aggressive and, uh, getting, you know, doing, um, that hope word. Uh, I intend to, <laughs> you know, but like I said, I can't argue that I'm really good at doing what I intend to do because I'm not. So, um, don't take it as a guarantee or anything. Just, you know, I mean, I really, I can't make, ex if I had some great excuses, I'd offer them, but I don't have any great excuses except I get distracted and I have to narrow the number of things I'm attempting to do. And I'm really bad at that. Um, it's like having too many kids or something. I just, I, I got in over my head. I have too many projects and you just can't. You can't spread yourself that thin. So anyway, this is his excuses again. Uh, so let's see, was there anything else? I thought there was some other flash from the past or something. Um, no, probably not. Well, it probably was, and I'm, so I'll get to it eventually, I guess. But anyway, uh, thanks and such. And... Um, Next video, no, I won't bother. No point, no point, no point. It's like the drunken peasants. They keep promising to do something brilliant. They never do anything brilliant either. <laughs> so anyway, you probably the best thing to do is just expect more of the same. And then you'll be surprised when I show up with something really good. But anyway, till next time and such. And keep it simple. Definitely do a Linux video this week. See, that's the thing. I'm just trying to do these different things. This is, see, that's the, the... It's like I can do more than one because the sense is you do one, it's just an overview. And then you can... It's all the specific programs. I want to do some videos, but each one has little, you know, things about it that you really... If you don't know them, you can waste a lot of time. Um, so, anyway. But that's a whole other... It's another project, and I really don't need another project, but whatever. Until next time, such. Go forward to one now.